Hello all, and welcome to Tempest, part two. Uh, first and foremost, those of whom are astute and will notice such details, Isaac is no longer wearing white. This is mainly because I had to go back and replay the beginning segment, because I had made certain changes since the last part, and I did not feel like changing his outfit to white again. It just didn't feel right. Moving on. <sighs> this, uh... This was a thing, I'm not gonna lie. This event, weirdly, was tricky to put together, mainly because there was this one particular part after what's coming up in a moment here, a, a, a certain movement, that for some reason just did not want to cooperate. It, uh, it caused a few migraines for the past hour or so, rendering me a bit uh, worn out, but uh, not unable to do this. So. Needless to say, a lot of retweaking has to be done with the uh, overall battle system and how the moves work. I still feel like, um, even now, Veril's special abilities use far too little MP. That's that's something I'm gonna have to gonna have to address. I mean, that's not it's not a huge issue right now because the moves aren't terribly effective at the moment. I mean, they're mainly for um, they're mainly for status ailments at the moment, actually. Like. I figured since Isaac is a, uh, a a sort of paladin with his high defense and HP healing and all that, Veril should be sort of a uh, sort of be the opposite to that in a sense of dealing pretty legitimate damage and also some status effects since we don't have that yet. Uh, there will be another character later that more specializes in this sort of thing, but Veril for now kind of fits the bill. So that's kind of his purpose right now. But his special moves are. At the, at the moment, terribly weak, and I'm not completely sure why that is. It's possible his stats might actually have something to do with it, so... Yeah, he they, they need a little bit more repurposing, but for, for now, they work fine. I'm not complaining. That movement, for the love of all things holy, that, <laughs> that Masked Knight was evil. He did not want to cooperate at all. I couldn't get him to freaking move. It... <laughs> It was so mean. It was so mean. Why? I just... Ugh, God. That was the source of so much pain over the past however long. Ugh. Anyway. So, here we have uh, the official introduction of the character of Vero Exius. Uh, kudos to a friend of mine for this character's creation. Uh, I will name names in the uh, description below. But, yeah. Veril is not technically mine, but I have the right to use him, so it's not like I have any legal problems with that or anything, no, it's just, I'm just saying, giving credit where credit is due. He must have gone through, like, eight versions, I swear. Veril's creator <laughs> had this lovely habit of retooling his backstory and appearance every so often, and it eventually came to a point where <laughs> I had basically sit him down and be like, just settle on a concept, please. I mean, I keep having to retool the plot around this guy, and it, I, I want him involved, I do, because I like the character well enough, but for the love of things, just, 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 just cement a freaking character, please. And, well, I mean, he, he, he did. And, for all intents and purposes, Veril is pretty nicely constructed, and I am appreciative of that, so... Thank goodness. It was at this point that I kind of realized, Oh yeah, Isaac's poisoned. I should probably go... get something for that. And, I had actually thought that, here in the town of Farlor, that the item shop would have something like an antidote, but, um... As I will find out in a moment here, it does not. I actually forgot to put that in here, rendering this entire excursion pretty much useless. So, yeah, now I gotta trick my ass all the way back. That's, that's fine. It's just a walk. I mean, if Isaac dies of poisoning, so be it. For the record, you can't actually die of poisoning on the world map. Thank goodness for that. I mean, I mean, you'll still end up with one HP, of course, but you're not gonna die from it. 
I figured, if nothing else, the enemies will finish you off at that point. So it's not overly necessary. But, yeah, I had to hike myself back over to Salos for actually a handful of reasons. I wanted to get some new equipment for Veril, since he just got recruited and all that. And, of course, heal up and prepare myself for the first genuine dungeon in the game. I mean, the dungeon itself is in the... I, I, I could call it... It, it's a tower. It's the tower they mentioned in that previous conversation. And, uh... It's not, it's not overly hard or anything, of course. It's the first one. So it's, it's not too long, kind of tricky, but not overly complicated or difficult if you're prepared for it. I mean, I went in with a sort of minimal equipment set. Like, I only got what I felt was totally necessary at the time. And I got through it just fine, as you'll see through... See here in in a little bit. Uh, the boss, I don't know. The, the boss is difficult enough. This this entire segment is essentially a uh, a tutorial, I suppose. the The entire first chapter is essentially a tutorial. And that's fitting, right? By the time this whole thing is released as a demo, I actually plan to have a a handful of miscellaneous areas you could travel to for the sake of exploring around a bit, because I, I want to promote that. I want to I want to promote exploration and all that. So yeah. I do not actually have a functioning inn in Salos at this time, so this is the only way to refill your your uh, your HP and MP on a uh, rather quickly and effectively. The inn will be open soon. But for now, that's that's doing its job just fine. I might tweak what that does later, though, because it kind of defeats the purpose of an inn being here at all, like, save for convenience, I guess. But if you have the option between paying to uh, completely heal yourself and simply walking a couple extra feet to do the same thing for free, I might, I might tweak what, that, what the food there actually does. So, <sighs> something else to keep in mind. Yeah, I'm, I'm stocking up here. Uh, I actually got somebody pointing out in the last part that there is a considerable amount of lag, or at least it seems that way. What I noticed, though, is that the lag is actually by and large attributed to the recording I'm using right now. Um, the game itself does lag a little bit. I mean, not terribly so, but a little bit. But that's only when you're not recording. When I'm re when I'm actually recording, it lags a decent bit more significantly. Like you'll see here, I'm going straight up for a little while for almost no reason. That's actually because of input lag, um, which seems to be again due to the recording I'm using, right, the recording equipment I'm using right now. Um, but I don't know how to work around that just yet. Something I'll need to keep in mind, I guess. I have a lot of things to keep in mind. <laughs> but it's a process, and I'm willing to put up with it so long as you guys are. I mean, it's not its not my own time I'm worried about when it comes to this sort of thing. It's, it's honestly everyone else. I feel like if I take too long and I spend forever doing this and that and all over there and everything there and all over where and all that good stuff, I, I figure people might lose interest in stuff, which is probably bound to happen either way. But I just... I feel like I need to have something of substance to show off, otherwise it's all just words, you know? I mean, like, I can say, I can easily say, oh yeah, I'm working, I'm, I'm putting things together, which I am, but for what it's worth, I mean, it, it is just text, it's better to have something physical, right? I mean, it's the reason I'm doing these videos at all, and I'm sure you guys appreciate that, right? Right? No? No, whatever. But. So here we have the Tower of Speculum, as I've called it. Those of whom understand its meaning might get exactly what this place's purpose is. But those of whom don't, it doesn't matter, because you'll find out soon enough. Alright, in a moment here, I'm going to go ahead and take a break for a nice relaxing pause, so I'll see you all in a little bit. And we're back. 
All right, so continuing onward. This right here serves as the example to how I have planned to have the battle system work in Tempest. Like I said, or like I've mentioned before, I, I plan to have it as a sort of Chrono Trigger style, where the enemies are pre-placed in such a way that it kind of feels like random encounters, but it's not, because everything is pre-positioned to, you know... It, it, some enemies will be easily seen coming, like they'll have patrol routes such as knights and such, but others will be kind of like ambushes. I'm not sure what you classify these sentinels as. I, I, I guess... I guess you could see it coming after at least the first time. So... I'm assuming these would be a more predictable enemy type. Not that it matters too much, I mean they're right there, there's no getting around them. And there are battles like that in Chrono Trigger, so... it's justified. At least I think so. At first I was actually a little concerned this place might be too easy, because truth be told, there are not that many encounters in here, but after running through it personally as many times as I did, uh, I actually came to realize that this place is not... This, this place is not overly easy. Just a couple encounters, and if you're not careful... Just, just even with Isaac and Veril occupying the area, they, they, you can easily actually die in here. So, even if it doesn't seem like much, I'd still suggest not taking it lightly, especially after I've had the opportunity to go back and retool everything for the demo purposes. Let that be a warning. This, uh, this right here, you'll actually see coming up shortly. This is the first major puzzle I actually put together, and the eventing for it was... Not horribly painful, actually, but it did take some time and thinking to actually make work properly. But first, another battle. I needed an enemy type that I figured would kind of sit around in this tower to defend it and whatnot, and I, I figured these sentinels worked out nicely. They're not all that, like super amazing original looking, I suppose. No, I mean, well, I'm not trying to beat myself up here, but I'm just saying it's understandable why they're here and what their function is, so... They, they work fine. I'm happy about it. Feral actually does not have the best defense. The guy cannot take that much punishment. But then again, I guess that's what Isaac's for. Maybe I should have some kind of cover ability, actually. But does that feel too predictable? But, that, but at the same time, does the predictability even matter? Hmm. Something I need to think about, I guess. I don't know. I did think about it at by and large before, but thinking, but looking at it now, it might be necessary to have him at least have some kind of defensive capabilities to protect the other party members. I mean, a lot of the a lot of the combat. A lot of the skills and whatnot are still in the works, so... But everything's put together enough now for it to warrant at least this, uh, this video, so it's fine. Yeah. I mean, you still have to work decently enough to keep yourself alive, so as long as you're careful and conservative enough, this place... This place is, I think, in a comfortable level of challenging, but not quite painfully difficult. Which is good. Which is a good thing, I think. It's good. Uh, yeah. Remember those torches earlier? Yeah. Yep, I hope you do, because this is the first of... this is the first of many puzzles that I'll have set up. Not, in the, not just in this dungeon, but I mean collectively in Tempest in general. <laughs> so many events. But for a puzzle like this, I think it was worth it. All the setup, I think it was totally worth it. I think it's really cool. And here we have the halfway point. Oh, something I want to bring up, actually. The large stone tablet discussion that was uh, earlier in the dungeon. Uh, that actually is optional in the sense that if you do not read it, certain bits of dialogue will change. In fact, there is a discussion at this midway point 
that does not happen if you read it. And even, even the discussion before the boss of this area changes, depending on whether or not you read it. I mean, the events still play out the same, but the, the thought process among the characters leading up to that boss battle is, uh, is actually different. And that's the kind of thing I was trying to promote with the first demo when I said that examining things changes certain aspects of how everything's going to progress. And, uh, yeah, I mean, you'll, it'll change things. It'll make tweaks and adjustments. I don't, uh, and then I, am, I figure later what will probably happen is I'll actually have some events and optional things drastically change some aspects of the story. Like, right now, it's early enough for the changes to be minor and it not matter too much, but later I actually do plan to have some significant differences depending on what exactly you do. And considering how easy it was to do even small changes here, uh, expect to see a lot of that later, once this thing is really moving along. Something else I was trying to promote with the Tower of Speculum's overall theme was the concept of light and darkness, and the weaknesses and strengths therein. Like, the, the, there, were, there was the Dark Guardian just a second ago, and here we'll have the Light Guardian in a moment, so... The whole purpose is meant to sort of demonstrate elemental weaknesses and such. But unfortunately, again, Veril's weak uh, special abilities don't exactly help demonstrate this point very well. In fact, uh, the whole weaknesses and strengths thing needs to be tweaked by and large in general. And yes, the Light Guardian is not meant to be up in the air like that. That was actually... That was actually unintentional. Uh, I didn't realize that back when I was doing the recording, but... At the time, I'd done so many takes that I was just... I just... I just said, fuck it. I don't care. It's not that big of a deal, but... Uh, sometimes I swear this entire thing is just me noticing all the things I need to fix and change. But expect the demo to be actually much more complete. At least, at least that much. And I don't expect these videos to demonstrate the final complete product. It's mainly... They mainly exist just to show off how much progress I've made at this point in time. So... I mean, for, for, for that much of a goal, I would say they've accomplished it. And, uh, alright, with that, we have come pretty much to the end of the first dungeon. I'm not going to fight the boss just yet, for the sake of, uh, saving that for the next video, because we are nearing our limit here, and if I kept going, I'd probably have to stop the fight midway through, and I'd rather just do it all in one go, so. With that, that will be the end of part two, and I will see you all next time. Until then, I bid you adieu.